And I got because we're streaming live on YouTube. Uh, just starting this week, we are just getting the kinks out of the system, but we are up and running. Good morning, Elaine, and good morning, Shani, Shoni, I'm Thirst. Yeah, glad you can make it too, honey. We got a huge show today. Uh, incredible show today. And we're just probably going to go past to one hour normal show. Hang on, I got to plug everybody in. One, one cable left to go. I'm too busy. I okay, got so many clips to get through today. This stuff today is going to be the best day you guys ever had for documentation. Everything's going to go crazy. We got you. Yeah, we got you. Okay, here we go. <laughs> camera one. Okay, camera one. Do I have this on camera two? Look goofy that time. <laughs> Start show. It is the morning of March. I'm sorry, May 11th, uh, 2016. I'm Dana Dernfurt, your host, nuclear proctologist. Dot org, and you can find these videos and Fukushima presentations at Beautiful Girl by Dana on YouTube. And today we're going to talk about uh, reactors, but particularly about the melted, I'm sorry, about the spent fuel pools is a better way of putting this. And so over the last number of days I've been gathering up clips about this uh, from the nuclear experts that, that were rolled out like a perpetual motion machine as the accident was happening and forever after. And these are the most well-known people around the planet, allegedly. We even got Lake Barrett, who's gonna be here in video. But we got uh, other things going on today that we're gonna to have to, to get through that are, I think will hopefully resolve some of the questions out there about, let me get rid of that. Let me get in track here. Yeah, we got an interesting day. Good morning, everybody. Checks and balances. And uh, Big Shed. I'm just trying to catch names. I haven't got glasses on. So, good morning, everybody. I was trying to find a conversation there. I don't know, uh, uh, blah, 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 blah. let's keep going. And so, let's start off with a clip. Yeah? Okay, let's start off with a, first let's run through the reactors. You had Fukushima, 9.0 earthquake. Now, everything I'm telling you, and I'm going to show you in the next uh, two minutes, the industry, um, that were out in the media that I'm going to show you after, no, and had access to. Okay, but don't worry about that. We'll, we'll, we'll also bring this back up here and there as we need to. This is the tsunami coming through the country. The, tsunami, uh, the earthquake rocked the country for six minutes straight, thousands of aftershocks. 45 within the first couple of days were vicious aftershocks. And it was felt in Florida 30 minutes later. It uh, rocked all the buildings in Tokyo, for instance, and that uh, it shook your entire country. Imagine shaking your baby for six minutes. Well, this was much more violent. Uh, the tsunami came through the country and it left nothing standing. Do you think that a nuclear power plant was able to handle that? Does anybody out there on the planet really truly believe that? Well, the power plants were also ran through. They blew up in Fukushima Diachi and they melted down. And they delayed the level, not may have, but they delayed the level 7 rating. And that's important of the clips that I'm going to show you coming up. Because you talk about these levels. And so this is building 1. This is 100% meltdown and a melt through and a melt out. This is unit 2. This is 100% meltdown, melt through, melt out. This is the one they normally talk about for venting. They don't bother saying they were trying to vent that. They did try to say they were venting that, and um, they had power restored to that within the first six days. And not that it would matter if you restored power to something like that. That's unit three. By the way, 
that thing had a or unit two had a unit two here had a million sievers. Five sievers will kill you outside of it. Unit three was most likely to cause it that outside of it because look at it, it blew up and sent it over next to it. And you see unit two to your left, and unit four was on the other side. Okay, we have modelings from the world from the Australian uh, Austrian Central Institute for Meteorology. Uh, we have uh, Norwegian Institute for Research. We have all kinds of modeling. These are just a few of well-known ones for everybody. You're red. You have uh, Francis Institute, etc., etc., etc. Okay. We have seen the buildings, and we know we know that's completely and utterly got it. We know that's got it, and we know that's got it for sure. And now we know through this the heat signature and everything else that this was got it also. But we also know that through the Muron detector, we know Tepco come out and told us that that building was inside of this. Now, the fuel pools are at the top of the building. And so that's what the controversy so far has been about for some reason. People keep coming out and saying that Dana's wrong. The fuel pools are not at the top of the building. That's the top of the building. Look at the roof. They tore it all off, see? And so I got clips coming up. But here's Tepco telling you that inside it looks like that. Inside of this, it looks like that. So let's play that very quick. And... Uh a Fukushima Daiichi stage, the, right after the accident, uh, it was of course the uh, emergency condition. But uh, right now, uh, gradually, gradually, uh, uh, became the uh, decommissioning stage, a more stable decommissioning stage. And that's that, the, as I mentioned, uh, the successful uh, completion of the uh, uh, dismantle of the uh, spent fuel from the unit four. Now uh, it's about a 1533 uh, bundle from the unit four, and uh, we carefully uh, manipulate uh, the machine. But anyway, we removed uh, uh, those fuel. That's one the, month uh, ago. Ground pool, ground located pool. This is one month ago. Tepco was on stage in America at the press club, telling them that it looks like that on the inside. And so this is absolutely untenable that somebody is out there, especially from TEPCO, and this is the official picture from TEPCO. That's what it used to look like. Remember, it looked like that. And here's Seth Dorn saying he's inside of that. He's inside of that. So now we're having a few problems with buffering that time. We'll hang her, hang her down and wait till that settles down. There's no reason for buffering. Of the decommissioning work here's taking place here in reactor TEPCO. 4. At the end of our tour, we were checked for well, radiation the exposure. Let's do that one more time. Decommissioning work taking place here in reactor four. Yeah, and then he got a chest X-ray. So here's a person who's saying that he's inside of a building that don't exist. And if you think about that, uh, how you can green screen anything to look like real life, it's not hard to imagine how Set was able to do something like that. Yeah. And then Tepco coming out and reaffirming it in the media. And that's also because Miles O'Brien claimed he was inside a unit four. scanned all of us and got checked a the dosimeters that we carried along the way. During our four and a okay. half hour tour, we absorbed as much radiation as we so would good have now, Lane. in Thank a you. single chest x-ray. Everyone, okay, good. Let's go. Let's go. Now, we got some show for you folks today. You got no idea what I've been up to. But first... I showed you those modelings of the radiation fallout, yeah? Across, you know, that was the Eurad project, France, you had Austria, you had the Norwegian Institute for Air Research. It's just one of many, many, many that are out there. And, but they were only on the Unit 2 releases. They weren't on those destroyed reactors or the reactor cores that were on the roof at the top of the building. Okay. <coughs> So before I get into all the clips, I'm going to play you a clip I made a couple years ago. And in order to explain radiation fallout, when it hits a lake or a river or a stream or an estuary or something like that, like fresh water, and how that works as, it's, as the water works its way back down to the coastline, 
And so watch your volumes. I'm not kind of all over the place. I did adjust all my volumes today. Let me adjust something else while I'm at it. Adjust me, make me a little darker there. Okay. Got all my lights are on. So I don't know why he's doing that. Okay, so this video coming up, I made it a couple of years ago, so you know I probably screwed up a little tiny bit, but I do believe it tells the story. I can't remember. Let's let's try and find out anyway. It's actually a really good little video. When you think about it in terminology, when you think about it in terminology of radioactive fallout into your water supplies in your country and how that actually works. Here we go. You have no or little radiation when it's hemorrhaging into the ocean nonstop. Imagine if a river was 4,000 miles long and you got a top of the river and you poured in 300 tons of dye all day, every day, you never stop. 300 tons every day of dye, hardcore dye that don't disappear, that lives for thousands of years. And after over three years, you got in a helicopter and you went down that river a couple of thousand miles. Do you think you would find a spot where the dye never penetrated and everything? All the estuaries, all the rivers, all the drinking water, all the rain falling, all the communities, all the farmland wouldn't be affected by all that dye for one friggin' second? Imagine that going up into the jet streams where it only takes three days to get across onto your continent. Do you think that that doesn't have a factor, that you can't burn this, you can't even pour acid over something that is contaminated and decontaminated because all you do is liberate that isotope, that atom, that particle. Okay, and so I use St. Patty's Day to give that some context. And I'm smoking a cigarette that don't have 7,000 chemicals. Ask your local media and institutions why they never bothered telling you that and I told you that it was nicotine, right? Oh, we got such a good day for everybody today. Ooh. So this one here, uh, it was posted March the 23rd. I'll bring that up on a bigger screen. The audio is going to be back and forth because a lot of these videos are different audios. I readjusted everything, but March the 17th was uh, 2011 is when they actually produced it right after the accident, six days. But March the 23rd, 2012, Bloomberg started uploading all of these videos. Like, I'm talking about a lot of them. From March the 17th and March the 18th and March the 16th, 14th and 15th, 13th, right after the accident that first week, that they, they didn't for some reason upload, but they did upload a whole bunch of other videos. That's for another day on originally, but these they all uploaded on March the 23rd. Not all of these, but you'll see the date on each one. I just want you to have some kind of context. Here we go. He's an expert and they're gonna introduce him in five, four, Three, two, one, and two. Let's get more details on Japan's nuclear crisis. We're joined by Brendan Kennedy, Professor of Chemistry at the University of Sydney. Uh, Dr. Kennedy, good morning. Thank you for joining us. You're welcome. Uh, the greatest threat to public health seems to be the spent fuel in pools of water atop the plant's six reactors. I think one of the things we need to keep remembering is that the operators there have six reactors. Three were operating at the time of the earthquake, the other three were shut down for routine maintenance. So they're dealing now with trying to keep all six reactors in a safer condition. In a safer condition. <laughs> okay, next clip. This, uh, let me stop it right there and bring it up so everybody can get it after. Once again, this was posted at Bloomberg on the 23rd, but it was uh, originally done in 2012. It was originally done March the 18th, uh, seven days after the accident, 2011. This was the first anniversary they posted uh, both of these clips coming up. And here's Horace talking about the top of the building. I want to get more analysis now because I'm joined again by our guest Ian Hall-Lacey of the World Nuclear Association. Then it has appeared that this, the used fuel pools up near the top of the buildings uh, have been 
depleted of water and overheating. That's been the focus. That's been the footage of helicopters dropping water, I think, very ineffectively. Uh, but the fire brigade has uh, fixed it, I think, for the time being. And now they're connecting power, <laughs> so they should be able to get pumps going and replenish those uh, spent fuel storage pools. But the implications of those completely drying out are quite serious. Uh, and that's why it's been a high priority to get water back into those. <laughs> Ian Orlacy of the World Nuclear Association. Thanks so much. Hang on, my chair is up on it. Uh, that's not it. Gotta be able to make all kinds of noise in the background. Okay. So that's two different experts talking about the fuel pool. Well, one was the newscaster. I just wanted to throw that one in there. But he said it was at the top of the buildings, right? Do you see a top of a building of Unit 4? <laughs> That's that set door and is inside of and says, Tepco says looks like that. Do you? Huh? Do you? Do you? Do you? That's Unit 4. Yeah, you might say, okay, well, Dan is hit away. But let's think about something. The reactor fuel pool doesn't have a containment unit. It's just a bunch of cement and steel, right? Okay. Uh, and there is no top to the building. Now, Unit 3... Guess what? That ain't got no top. Have a look at that. That got no top. It got no top. How are you going to get uh, water into that again? Now, Horace Lacey, Ian, Horace Lacey, he's a, just a despicable, <laughs> unbelievable, manipulative um, war machine. He's just disgusting. He's a war against every species on the planet. That guy. Now, so the buildings, there's no fuel pool, it's gone. No fuel pool, it's gone. No fuel pool, it's gone. Where did it go? Well, the Australians, Austrian, uh, Australians, rather. Austrian, rather. Uh, Norwegian Institute for Air Research, that's where it went. Eurad Project. You've got Francis Institute for Radiological Protection, blah, blah, blah. Okay, let's keep going. Hi, Kate. Good morning, everybody. Kate got the Fukushima hounds. And let's get back to... Now, here's Kelly. Hi, Kate. Kelly uh, says Fukushima is not... I'm sorry, that's not the one I wanted to play first. I want to leak Barrett. And then we're going to jump for a minute to headlines. Should we come back to Lake after? Okay, let's, let's play Lake. <laughs> now, Lake, uh, he'll explain who Lake is. Now, Lake is uh, is now a, a representative for Tevco, the same person. That's why Tevco came out to the American press, is because of Lake Barrett, and told him Unit 4 looked perfect, right? It's gone, though. And where was it? It was at the top of the building. We'll come back to that if you like. <clears throat> we had a lot of clips to get through, and we got just, we're going to go past our hour today, because this is so, and I got some real good twist in this one today. Here we go, with Lake Barrett. Potentially fatal levels of radiation have been discovered outside the crippled nuclear plant, raising concerns that contamination is working its way further into Japan's water and food supplies and foreshadowing a long and expensive cleanup. Nuclear engineer Lake Barrett knows what it takes to mop up a catastrophic mess like this. Lake led the initial response to the Three Mile Island accident here in the United States. He's with us this morning from Washington Lake. Where are the major concerns? Well, the iodine 131 that you hear about, uh, that has an eight day half life, so that decays away fairly quickly, I think they should be fine from a health point of view. Like we're beginning to hear more about plutonium. What's the significance of plutonium in this situation? Plutonium is something that is more emotional than it is uh, technical in this situation. I think the big... <laughs> uh, let's go back to that one in a second. Plutonium. Here's Dr. Raymond Gilmetti from Loveless Respiratory Research Institute in New Mexico. By the way, his uh, studies showed that curium isotopes and iodine has only got an eight-day half-life. These things live forever, curium, and plutonium do too, see? That's why he talked about iodine. But uh, he done studies on beagle dogs and beagle puppies for 35 years. One study, 144, he got 94 of them. One study, and he's still in business, one study, uh, 144 beagle dogs. And look what plutonium done to all of these dogs. Tony will actually burn a hole in your lung when it gets in there. 
That's why you hear all your friends and your neighbors with these wicked coughs that never go away. Some of it will burn the hole right through and it'll heal up and then they'll get a lot better, but you still have that hack from that hole to keep uh, festering. Lung tumors found in 46 dogs, tumors of the lung, skeletal, and liver. That's why everybody's hot, hot, hacking up all that mucus. Beginning about three years after exposure each morning. Bone tumors in 93 dogs. No, no, it's, it's um, how was it, Lake put it? Let's come back to Lake. Lake's pretty funny, man. He's disgusting. Let's get rid of that version. We'll leave it up like that so we can chat. Well, the iodine-131 that you hear about, uh, that has an eight-day half -life. Yeah, we hear about that all the time because they rolled out all people like you. And he was in charge of Three Mile Island. After watching this, you'll appreciate how scary that statement actually is. Here we go. Life, so that decays away fairly quickly. I think they should be fine from a health point of view. Yeah, like, we're beginning to hear more about plutonium. What's the significance of plutonium in this situation? Plutonium is something that is more emotional than it is uh, technical in this situation, I think. <laughs> I got to do that for this. this is a bad habit. It doesn't have 7,000 chemicals. It's just not, I shouldn't be doing it too often. The biggest concern people have is the cesium and the strontium uh, and the iodine in the short haul. Yes, there is some plutonium uh, in there. There's always there is a lot of plutonium in there. Now, a, a pound of it is enough to kill everybody on the planet. A single microgram, a millionth of a gram, I'm sorry, that's actually wrong. Yeah, that's a really misleading statement, people who say that. So a gram of plutonium would have basically the same as curium where it, per gram. It would have um, 88 petabecals or 88, um, yeah, petabecals. No, no, back that up. 88, I can't even remember the name of it now. But it's 88 times 37 billion atoms. I don't know why I can't remember that name for some reason. So 88 times 37 billion atoms per gram of cesium. And, and uh, plutonium is going to be the same thing, see? So a gram of plutonium would be uh, one uh, three trillionth. So one three trillionth of a gram, not one one billionth. This is a fatal cancer. Cancer shows up way down the road. There's 1,800 diseases first, Alzheimer's, dementia, autism, dementia, diabetes, heart, liver, lung, respiratory. Always plutonium in reactor fuel, so it makes more emotional news to talk about plutonium. Makes more emotional news? So we're only supposed to talk about the iodine with the eight-day half-life, yeah? All right, let's talk about... Well, it's going to be decades and many billions of dollars to clean it up, but it's just a large um, industrial catastrophe in... Just a large industrial catastrophe. See, the language that they use is everything. This is the guy, this is not some Joe Blow, this is a guy who covered, who was in charge of Three Mile Island. Calling it an industrial accident. They blew up. He knew that. He knew all the pictures I showed you earlier. Keep Currently to the plant, it's not a health catastrophe for the country. <laughs> Not a health catastrophe yet, but here, lots of stuff appears to have been exposed to the atmosphere and radiation is finding its way already into vegetables and the Tokyo water supply. See, that's twice he's told Lake Dad. Keep going. So at what point in your mind does it become <laughs> a health disaster as opposed to just an operational disaster? You're going to start to have a findings of some radioactivity outside for weeks ahead, so there'll be news about it. But I don't think overall it's going to be a, a huge health catastrophe that some people predict. Well, the iodine... <laughs> that could be a huge catastrophe. But see, if he was being honest and he's educated, he's a nuclear engineer, he knows he'd done three mile island. He knows the modelings that I showed you earlier. And he's now in charge of informing you in North America as a liaison with TEPCO. 131 day half-life, so that decays away fairly quickly. So compare, if you will, this situation to what we saw take place at Chernobyl it and the after-effects of Chernobyl over the past uh, 25 years. Well, I think Chernobyl was, was a much worse situation. Uh, that was a Soviet reactor that basically blew itself up and spread things all over the area. <laughs> Well, what the hell happened 
in Japan, if that's not blown up and spread all over the area, Lake, that's why this person is so despicable. How can you say that when he's the expert? He has access to all the information. He's actually the liaison with TEPCO. It's really shocking. Now, so he, how many people did he murder at Three Mile Island is the, from the fallout? See? He done the same fucking thing. It's disgusting. But keep going. Yeah. This is a different type of reactor. There's a lot of water and most of the radioactivity is kept in the water locally on the plant. How the fuck can you do that when a building's blew up, Lake? Although you can see, you know, leakage outside the plant. But I don't think we expect to see a Chernobyl type situation there. Okay. Blake, thanks so much for joining us. It's Lake Barrett, a nuclear engineer and former deputy director of the Office of Civilian Radioactive... For the U.S. Americans. Okay. Oh, I got no idea what I've done with everything this morning, do I? It's kind of a hunting expedition here right now. Let's go back up. It should be up here. Fukushima plume covered most of North America, now over North Atlantic, including the Caribbean. Okay, we're going to pick up there when we come back. Let's move myself over for this bit of fun. Uh -huh. <coughs> Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Yeah, I see you all there. Thank you, everyone. He had a lion lake. Okay. Edinburgh Memorial, Jeff Palco. Jeffrey Jeff Palco. Now, he donated a boat, not all the stuff that we put on the boat after, but he donated the boat originally. And he's been used to demonize me ever since. He came on right away. And now, allegedly he committed suicide, and there's a guy out there named Connecting Dots. He's also known as Louis Lamore from Victoria, British Columbia, Canada. And he has been stalking me and harassing me nonstop, including everybody else talking about nuclear, but particularly me, where he has many sites and he reposts his videos every day on those sites. So there's many headlines of me every day. Even when I was on the ocean for 260 days, and the Fukushima Expedition for Life. Now, during one of those expeditions, which was five months, uh, on Christmas Eve, Jeff Palco, what you see right there, allegedly committed suicide. Now, his obituary is gone. He had no families or friends listed, um, um, or loved ones or anything like that. Now, if you ever lost a loved one, you know what's written there in that memorial, right? They list your family, your sons, and everybody else sadly missed by ex-wife or wife or or bereaved, etc., etc. Yeah, okay. And some of you know him way more than other of us. I know. And that's why it's such a difficult subject. So I was thinking, why not go and over to here and click contact? Scroll down. And let's call the cemetery and find out what his plot number is and see if he's actually there. Because, you know, I'm hoping he's a real person and that somebody is vilifying him to get at me rather than the nuclear industry faked all of this. So let's call the funeral home. And we'll bring that up to the camera for you in a second here. One, four, and three, two, one, seven. I'll bring up the other screen, the other camera for everybody over here, right there, camera one, and three, seven, zero, zero. Now I'm going to put that up close to the camera until I can see it. I don't know if this, it's too bright. It's too bright, is not it? It's too bad. Okay, well, you'll hear it because we'll be on the speakerphone. 1403 217 3700. 1403 217 3700. Memorial Gardens Marine Speaking. How may I direct your call? Yes, I am looking for a plot 
uh, the ones breeding. I got his name. Okay, yeah. one moment, please. Thank you. I'm going to have to take your name and phone number and get someone to call you back because all the family counselors are busy. But what is the name of the deceased? It's Jeffrey, G-E-O-F-R-E-Y, P-A-L-K-O. P-A-L-K-O. Yes, and he was interned there at March to, I'm sorry, December 23rd, 2015, he died. My name is Dana Dunford. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Could you hold just a moment? I'm sorry. Go ahead. And why should we not wait until he's happy to be done? Because he's just about to be done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
and you can call him yourself after if you have to. But the point being now is that if Jeffrey Palco is not in the plot there, uh, then we contact the police and we start an investigation to find out what's going on here. Now we did do this before and there was no plot. We know that uh, they got his name there. When he died, allegedly it was December 24. And, but the obituary doesn't exist, the eulogy doesn't exist, etc., etc. And at the originally, uh, this is linked over from blogs, from originally reports of his death, and this was the route everybody was using for documentation from this funeral home, Edinburgh Memorial Gardens in Alberta. And so I've been demonized and accused of killing this person, and I've been literally attacked so much that I've been defunded in my pursuit of Fukushima documentation. And if people are not familiar with that, what we done was we go out and we do the whole coastline of Canada. And I'll bring that up for everybody. We went out and done the whole coastline of Canada. Now Jeff bought that little Zodiac, but we done everything else. We built everything else. And we covered uh, 15,000 miles of coastline. Instead of the coastline being healthy, this is the same spot in, in what, just this set of pictures in particular, pre-Fukushima, post-Fukushima. This is uh, post-Fukushima right now. This is pre-Fukushima. Think about that. That's post-Fukushima. That's after Fukushima in the same spot. This is one of the most highly coveted spots in Canada. It used to look like that. And now the whole coastline is literally 100% down to less than 100 species. And a lot of spots are completely naked. So we've done that whole coastline. But this boat, uh, the fact that this was donated, donated to me, donated a, a, a vicious individual that seems to work for the nuclear industry was pummeling me while I was on the ocean was trying to destroy me when I was on the ocean and quite uh, likely succeeded dramatically and but also has constantly accused me of killing a man as known as I just showed you that time Jeff Palco who doesn't have an obituary that doesn't list family names when it was there doesn't list friends or relatives or anything else or parents or loved ones or daughters or sons or anything else. And so that was highly suspect when I was phoned on the ocean when this happened. But I was still on the ocean for another four months before I came home. But at that same time, this person was in Canada known as Connecting Dots 1, Connecting Dots 2, Connecting Dots 3. Silver Gold Man has viciously slandered me. And this has literally led it to me being defunded and not able to raise any money because a lot of people don't understand the technical terms of it. But the people that knew better did continue to support me. And we did succeed and do the whole coastline of Canada. The whole coastline of Canada. And the 4.2 million other species in the Pacific Ocean didn't receive the coastline. This was from the radioactive disposition, the fallout, for, and the constant releases into the Pacific Ocean. The jet streams are actually real. And the ocean current gets here in 45 days. But it never stopped going into the, co into the ocean. But like the videos we're going to keep watching coming up right away, I just wanted to break that down for you. Now, Lake Barrett, you've seen Lake Barrett, you've seen Ian Horsley talking about the fuel pools on the roof. We're just going to play that clip one more time coming up to get you back on track. I want to get more analysis now clips. because I'm joined again by our guest Ian Horlacey of the World Nuclear Association. Then it has appeared that this, the used fuel pools up near the top of the buildings uh, have been depleted of water and overheating. That's been the focus. That's been the footage of helicopters dropping water, I think, very ineffectively. Uh, but the fire brigade has uh, fixed it, I think, for the time being. And now they're connecting power, so they should be able to get pumps going and replenish those uh, spent fuel storage pools. But the implications of those completely drying out are quite serious, uh, and that's why it's been a high priority to get water back into those. Ian Orlacy of the World Nuclear Association. Thanks so much. There's so many of them out there, but anyway, I gave you a couple examples of what they're talking about. By the way, my service don't got 9,000 chemicals. So Kelly says, not another Chernobyl. This was the PR firm. And it's just shocking. This was uh, March the 14th. That one showed up at Bloomberg. Well, the comparison that can be made is this is nothing like Chernobyl. It's, it's, a, it's a serious event. It, it uh, offers some risk. Now, all the reactors had already blown up. He's the expert, too. It's worse than Three Mile Island, but it's not 1,000th as bad as Chernobyl. Now, Chernobyl stopped after 10 days. Chernobyl was a 30% meltdown. Chernobyl sent in over a million people. Chernobyl was uh, one-third the size. 
And Chernobyl was equated with 400 Hiroshima bombs. But Chernobyl, for all intents and purposes, the chain reaction parts of it is still going down to the earth, yes. It's still releasing to the environment. But Chernobyl was graphite. These reactors, number three in Fukushima, was mixed oxide fuel, MOX fuel. This was an incredible amount of plutonium, an inconceivable amount. So like Barrett, when he came out with his video, that was because the unit three had exploded full of MOX fuel. So he said, it's just a salacious talking about plutonium, it doesn't matter. Iodine got, is the one, and is, but it's only got an eight-day half, like plutonium is uh, 250,000 years. Let's keep listening to Kelly. Chernobyl was a reactor that was running. It so was run up to full power and beyond, and it exploded while it was running. Yeah, and three reactors in Japan done the same fucking thing. And he knew it on that day. He knew it on that day, we didn't. But he knew it on that day. We suspected it, but he actually knew it. This is what he says. It's just shocking. It's the utter betrayal. But these are the people in charge of your infrastructure. 30, 20, 30, 40 years in the government, putting policies there. When they have an accident, they roll them out, and he fucking shafted you, murdered you, literally. Killed the Pacific Ocean by doing what he's doing. There was no containment building whatsoever on Chernobyl, uh, which... No containment in the fucking fuel pools. We have now at least two layers of containment that seem to be relatively intact in Japan. And finally, Chernobyl had a graphite core. Big, that graphite is fucking nutty compared to mixed oxide fuel. The reactor 3 in Japan is two million times worse than any other reactor on the planet. Let's keep going. Basically charcoal. And when that hundred tons of charcoal caught on fire <laughs> with radioactive fuel in it... Hundred tons. There's five million pounds in each of the reactors. And there's five million pounds every two months, every two years, that went up on the roofs. All six of the reactors that Japan had actually melted down. I'll show you some of that coming up. This huge fire lofted into the air and carried it for hundreds of miles. Nothing like that is going to happen. Nothing like that is going to happen at Fukushima is what he's going to say. i got to learn to make the videos a little bit longer because the equipment and software I'm using cuts off the first couple of seconds and the last couple of seconds. And you think after 80 shows with this equipment, I would understand to do that. But no, I don't even know how to use the equipment I got. I'm still no good with it. I could do Hollywood productions with this stuff, legitimately. It's authenticating software on top of all that. Let's go Kelly one more time. Same day. Now, they posted the first clip you just looked at, which was that one. Uh, 2011, March the 14th. Now, they posted this one, same thing. Same day, this is Kelly again. This is just a clip of me. He, he was. We're going to bring in an expert now on power. nuclear energy. He is an engineer, and he also managed the emergency radiological response team, working with the U.S. Department of Energy for 30 years. Robert See, Kelly is scary, with us right? now. He is that's on the fucking frightening. He he was in charge of of people uh, being protected in America. So every accident, he was the guy was they rolled out to cover it up. He's not human like me or you. My cigarettes don't got 7,000 chemicals. Don't swallow you. Phone joining us from Vienna. Thank you so much, Bob, for being with us this morning. As an engineer, first of all, from what you are reading, <laughs> what are the chances <laughs> on a scale of 1 to 10 of a meltdown? Well, I think the reactors are already damaged beyond any possible use. They were, they were beyond, damaged beyond use after probably half an hour on Friday when the cooling... When the cooling, see, I cut it off again. When the cooling system went down, within a half an hour, because the cooling system went down. See? You get it yet? Let's keep going. Unit 5 and 6. This is a very short clip. And this got posted in 2012, but was created... The that, uh, if you take the example of the units uh, uh, 6 uh, and uh, 5 and 6, uh, uh, in, uh, in Fukushima, uh, the level of the plants is uh, higher than the Miss, uh, Mr. level Stricker? Uh, of the plants uh, 1 to 4. And Mr. Stricker, thank you so much for being with us. Lawrence Stricker. So the levels in 5 or 6 were higher than the levels of 1 to 4, which all melted down and detonated and caught fire and blew up and melted down, caught fire and detonated and blew up and caught fire and melted down and fucking blew up. That's a revelation and a half. Let's keep going. Yeah, these are some crazy, crazy critters. 
too much clicking maybe I'll get rid of some of that clicking for everybody here we go this was posted in 2012 but it was uh, pr uh, produced on the 14th three days after the accident anytime you're ready Dana Oh, that was, uh, yeah, that was just to introduce you to Maya Rico. Cameron Nickbin. He is Professor of Structural Integrity at Imperial College London. He joins me now. Thank you very much indeed He's for coming in to see us today. Now, you're working in the Centre for Nuclear Engineering, and what we've seen already... Come right back to that. Here's a, a little... No, no, we'll keep going with that. By Cameron Nickbin. He is Professor of Structural Integrity at Imperial College London. He joins me now. Thank you very much indeed for coming in to see us today. Now, you're working in the Centre for Nuclear Engineering, and what we've seen already with these explosions that have taken place, is there any danger from the explosions that we've already seen? It's, um, the, the present explosions are on the outer area of the central core, so the core hasn't been breached. The dangers are minimal at the moment. Mm -hmm. It is unlikely that we will see something like Ch Chernobyl. It is now three days since the start of this action. It's unlikely you see something like Chernobyl, which is one third the size and a 30% meltdown in a single reactor. You got three confirmed 100% meltdowns, and he knew it, right? And I think the can't trust workers who've been working a 24 hour shift to try and get this uh, work. They all ran away, man. Clan pulled them out. Khan pulled him out, right, the president, and uh, it was a million sievers an hour outside of number two, for Christ's sakes, but five sievers will kill working, you. Um, ...have been able to contain the possible danger of a full explosion, so I think... I now watch, they're going to show in the background a full explosion. At the moment there's not a... I think... Is too it, much to worry about. Is it safe to say yeah. that the longer this goes on... He said there won't be an explosion, but yet there was that explosion, see? Do you got any idea how out of a touch with reality are institutions, universities, and academics really are? Why would we ever send our children to a university after watching that is beyond me. Because that's murder, what he's doing right there. It's 100% murder. Well, look at that explosion. The less likely it is no, that no we are going to see... They, they're in there, they control it. Yeah, they stopped it. There it is, though. In the same clip, for fuck's sakes. Catastrophic explosion. Yes, yeah, certainly. The first 24 hours are Let's crucial. Again. Likely that we will see something like Ch Chernobyl. It is now three days since the start of this action, and I think the workers who have been working a 24 hour shift to try and get this uh, working um, have been able to contain the possible danger of a full explosion. So I think at the moment a there's. Full explosion? Is too it, much to worry about. Is it safe to say that the longer this goes on. That's a full explosion, see? So he's saying that's not a bad explosion. He's worried about something bigger than that. But that's uh, all the, the reactor cores were on the roof are going up in the air at the same time. Right out of the building. Gone. Ba boom. Um, the less likely it is that we are going to see. Look at it. No. So why, why, oh why, oh why wasn't we getting nuclear scientists coming out and pummeling people like this saying, or people coming out saying, hey, wait a second, buddy. Why didn't the university call him into the office and say, you're fired, man? How can you say that they never had an explosion when there's one in the background on the fucking TV screen? You moron. Yeah, a catastrophic explosion. Yes, yeah, certainly. The first 24 hours are crucial. Beyond that, uh, they would have been able to pump water in there. Pump no, they weren't. We got the headline after headline after headline. We showed that all, all the time. They never had no water in the 18, 19, 28, 21st, 22nd, 23rd, 24 hours. Pump chemicals to cool down the uh, reactors which Sucky were already shit, shut man. down. So it's unlikely that uh, unless uh, water is cut off for some reason or water doesn't have in contact with the core. And that is what happened. Uh, that you will see something major. And now, because of the seawater, I don't see a problem at all. What's left of Unit Three? No, when we look at why this happened, completely and the reasons for it. Uh, how much of this has to do with the fact that it is built in an area that's prone to earthquakes, and the tsunami struck yeah. the plant? Um, remember, this is a forty-year-old reactor. Okay. Right, and so a forty-year-old reactor. The license was for thirty years because at the end of that, if you had an earthquake because of the Wigner effect, the building could shake apart. 
That's why they're not supposed to run these things in the weir past originally, see? They know the Wagner effect would destroy the steel and the metal and, and the precious metals and everything else they got there, and the integrity will be gone, and it would immediately start having, long before 30 years, major cracks in it from the Wigner effect. So an earthquake, right, because of the Wigner effect, now because when the de reactors detonated, uh, they sent radiation all over the site, so everything is completely covered in radiation, everything is permeated with radiation, and so every time you have an earthquake, and they have thousands, pieces of those buildings are falling apart that's left there. Let's keep going. The design levels at that, point, at that stage would have taken into account the possibility of an earthquake. They would not have considered an earthquake of 8.9 scale. It's quite a massive uh, earthquake which has only happened six times in the last century. So just looking at that and seeing the containment hasn't failed, the main containment has not failed. See, and this is the game they play where they say, no, no, the sarcophagus around the fuel rod um, can withstand a meteorite smashing into it. It can withstand Superman tearing at it. It can withstand a Hulk ripping at it. It's all these fantasies, see? They've done a fairly good job to that extent. The How can you do a good job three days after the action? You couldn't. You cannot get in the reactor is the problem. So everything that comes out of his mouth is based upon a normal everyday building. It's not based upon a brutalized building that detonated fuel rods throughout the site. You walk past it, you melt your organ, you fucking drop dead. He knows that. But he's not going to tell people stuff like that because then people will understand everything he says his entire life and that university and that college and those institutions are maniacal fucking freaks of nature. These are the most disgusting people imaginable and they were the ones and the only ones we're allowed to see in the media. The peripherals of the cooling units and other sections have been destroyed. And uh, the, that possibly could have been improved because... New, new, new builds and new designs would have taken these in, into account for large earthquakes. Look, the buildings blew up, moron. The hydrogen, the noble gases were released. Just in any kind, you don't need an earthquake or a tsunami to have that happen. That's the default. And that's why you vent everything into the communities all the time. When the license says you would never release anything into the community, and in increments, they come out and made that seem normal. The same fucking people. A handful of them, less than a hundred of them, are doing this to this entire planet. Are setting the, 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 the standards and the basis and, and the, the premises of what nuclear is about. And they're all disgusting maggots. They're the most loathsome things on the fucking planet. They're not human. I don't know who they are or what they are, but they're not the fucking human species that I think about or anything close to it. Uh, following 2007, Niagata explo uh, earthquake. Explosion, right? In Japan. They, had to they shut down a bunch of... There was of a reassessment in Japan of all the nuclear up. sites. So they would have uh, improved safety. A but I think industry. this is a learning curve, and now they would have had a better... Now, oh, yeah, we, we raided the whole planet. Let us have another crack at it. We'll get it right this time. 70 years later, still like a fucking banana. All of these people should be brought to Fukushima and disposed of. That's the only good Fukushima has right now, is to get rid of these fuckers for the future. No, it seems that uh, people, uh, that countries that are, are not in earthquake zones are also reassessing all their nuclear needs. Do you think that this is, uh, this is an overreaction to what we've seen? Well, they have Japan? to show overreaction because the media and the public are always wary of this. This has been happening for the last 30 years. Uh, recently, people have decided... So he's saying that about Chernobyl and the other accidents, but he covered it all, every one of them up. Because the same pricks, the same soulless, spineless pieces of shit that anybody can fucking find on the side of the road, put a suit on it, stick it on a stage. It's horrible that people like that exist. It's unimaginable that people like that and nuclear PR firms exist on this fucking planet. These are the most horrible people imaginable. These are fucking monsters. These people probably got kids. These people are probably allowed to drive a fucking car for Christ's sakes. It's frightening. That the direction towards energy... Uh, you actually might be on a plane with someone like that. They might live in your fucking community for all you know. That's, 
This is fucking frightening, boy. Development is back to nuclear, not just people, committees, governments. And now, obviously, this they have to be very careful of what people, what government says at, say at the moment. So they're very careful about their statements at the moment. But I don't think... Why? Why not fucking come out and tell you the truth? Because if someone says it's not like a banana or a potato chip or a walk in the sunshine, they're fucking gone. And everybody's like, wait a second, it's not like a banana. It's not like a chest x-ray. not like getting on an airplane. But that's what I've been telling everybody because you told me for years. Now I'm a lawyer. That's what this whole planet is going through right now. It's just fucking disgusting. Let's keep going. So they never tested the stuff coming out because it was all going towards the ocean. So why bother testing it? This is the fucking ramblings of nut jobs we get on our TV. Here's one of them. Shocking, man. And he posted it in 2012. The winds are blowing out to sea, uh, but uh, the, the government says they're not testing them for radiation because they're not heading towards cities, so there's no risk to people. <laughs> and what advice... Do you got any... <coughs> they're not testing it because it's heading out towards the ocean. Fuck them. Fuck Northern America. yeah. What advice are foreign embassies giving uh, in this situation right now? Many of them are saying get out of Tokyo or get out of Japan altogether. We went down to the Chinese embassy in Tokyo before hundreds of people lining up to get their visas to get out of the country. Uh, the U.S. embassy says it will lend its citizens cash if they need to buy plane tickets to fly out. Britain, <laughs> Ireland, Germany, Norway all advising people to get out of the country. Everybody. Sony telling workers that they should not come into work and a lot of companies giving that advice. But... What was he said earlier? The winds are blowing out to sea, uh, but uh, the, the government says they're not testing them for radiation because they're not heading towards cities, so there's no risk to people. Yeah. But everybody knew you were lying, so actually shit. It's horrible, terrible, you, you know, soulless, spineless turds, and they didn't trust you. And the governments worldwide were telling their people to get the fuck out of the country. The, the companies were saying, no, you got to shelter in the place, but by not coming to work, stay home. And they knew that, but they never bother coming. They don't want to panic the population. But that was their job, was to warn the population. They call it panic. Oh, we didn't want to panic it. It's the same thing as saying, that's the, the other version of saying we didn't want to warn you. Say, well, we didn't want to panic you. My goodness, you know. My God. It's so horrible. But anyway, here's all these experts saying that the fuel pools are at the roof. And that five and six... There's more radiation than that, than that, than that, and then that combined. Okay. That all melted down, that's confirmed. And you start, didn't raise the level 7 because, you know, they want to set Dorn to be able to go in and pretend that everything looked fine, like Tepco was doing right, right? Into the Canadian press, when in reality it actually looked like that, it looked like that. They want you to think that it all survived with that single building there. And the reality of the official picture is, is much starker starker and much more. Think about how uh, on the 18th, no power, right? On the 25th, still no power. And what was the clips you heard earlier? Hour, day, and they were in trouble. Well, they were, and they are, and they always will be. Think about how that tsunami, think about how that was destroyed. Where did it go? Well, it went fucking straight up in the fucking air. That was all the reactor cores. Even if none of them melted down, just all the reactor cores on the roof atomizing and aerosoling and be distributing out into the environment like that is unbelievable. Think about the power that came through there. Think about what was left behind. You know, 21st, still not enough power. No, and it was all gone by then, see? Everything you see there is radiated from the fallout. Everything she's looking at, the poor. Everything there is radiated. Think about how it came through the country. Think about what it looked like. Now think about where everybody died because that came through their country. Think about it. Think about they picked up 30 million one-ton bags, enough to make five lanes of traffic right around the planet with one-ton trucks bumper to bumper with a, a one-ton 2,000 pound in the back of each truck. And then think about the people died all along that coastline. That's where the nuclear power plants. And think about the stunning headlines back originally, 2012 for instance, 15 reactors. Think about a Fukushima governor demands, demands 
demands TEPCO decommission, dismantle all 10 reactors. Think about those headlines. Think about the salt water on the reactor increases sulfur peroxide hydrogen buckyball. Right? And think about how that's non solutable in water but can be transported in water and how it's easily transportable. How, you know, it would take a million of them to make a, a flake of snow, uh, but one of them would give you cancer. And cancer is the last one to show up. Cancer, cancer is the last thing to manifest and be diagnosed. And all the other diseases, the ones you should be looking at, like studies around nuclear power plants showing 22% increases in leukemia, killer leukemias for children. Not, you know, just, just leukemias. 22% for children. Where women got six times more breast cancer in just a 15 test zone. But if they had a tester for radi um, other radiation illnesses that show up before the cancer, like diabetes and Alzheimer's and dementia and autism and children, stuff like that, they would have been blown away. They would have been freaked out. They would have been killed. Just suppress it. So just like right now, we had 28 million particles of radioactive iodine 131. Like like Bart said, eight day half, like people, 80 days. And iodine 131 is a tracer. And that meant everything else came through. That's all iodine means. And 10 times more iodine 132, it ionized radiates your thyroid glands nine times more effectively. 30 times more 133. 31 times more iodine, 129, with a 15 million year half life. And all of these are coming from uranium from a chain reaction, or created in that chain reaction. They're not like the natural iodines in nature, but that's why they named it that way in order to, to but it also goes the same path as natural iodine, is another reason, it has the same atomic property, but it's all created from ionizing radiating uh, atoms and isotopes, see? through the neutron bombardments. Very stark, very telling, uh, very frightening. So let's come over and burn through a bunch of headlines on... Um, Tokyo Professor, breach and containment of reactor number two. Number two was the one that was intact, right? Think about how these buildings blew up. Let's hope the funeral home calls me back in Alberta before the show is over. If not, I'm going to leave all the equipment running. I'll leave all the equipment running and just make sure it's the right camera. Leave all the equipment running and when the funeral home calls me back, I'll record everything. And if uh, they got no plot for Jeff Palco, again, I, I got no options but to, uh, I just hate the thought of it. I got no options then but to launch an investigation. And we might, at the same time, we might go to the funeral home in Alberta uh, next week and investigate it even further and talk to the employees, the management and, <coughs> and stuff like that. And we're also going to have to get the, the police department involved, the RCMP involved, and private uh, investigators on top of that probably involved to make sure everybody's playing fair. And so, let's cover some of the headlines because that has been used to demonize me, and I'm not going to sit by. It was not a nuclear explosion in reactor number three. I believe the fuel rods were blown out of the spent fuel pool. Yeah, you think so? You think the fuel rods were blown out of the spent fuel pool that was at the top of the building? That was at the top of that building. <laughs> I bet when it does something like that, does that look like it's blew up? Unit three, that's a prick Goddard journal, man. That is some scumbag. I'm not going to go down the road to him right now, but he is such a low life, eh? Goddard. Uh, this is what we're talking about, tsunami power and energy, right? Think about the detonations. How many detonations do you need? Again, I'm a little confused about that. One, look at it. Number three, number four. Reactor four had one explosion, two fires, allegedly. It had more than that. And see these detonations? It's sick. Those towers are 600 feet. Those big chunks, dark chunks you see in there, that's the reactors. Blown right. The reactor three, the reactor was blown out of it. It doesn't look like that. All the spent fuel removed from reactor number one, or four pull at uh, number one plant. See, they had to confuse you by calling it number one. And they also call it re uh, reactors number one sometimes too, right? But apparently, what they're saying there, right? is that all the fuel, that's, here's number four coming up, 
All the fuel is gone from that one. They took it out, and that. Uh, and we showed you the pictures earlier today. I'll just show you a couple of quick flashes to get you back to speed. They say it looks like that on the inside, right? Tefco came out a month ago and said it looks like that inside of that. That's what we're talking about. See. So it's not. It, this was the fable. This was the lie. That was the national, right? Kyoto, all all fuel removed. And hang on a second. I got another one here. Let me try to find it. One second. I got too much on my computer. But it's so much work to load everything all the time that I just literally never unload it. Okay, let's keep going. We're five minutes over schedule. We won't be much longer. I'm just going to burn through some headlines for a call of the day. Uh, Uniford boiled dry. Uh, that was 2013. You admitted that, right? Uh, 2011, March 19th. Renewed chain reaction feared at number four. A renewed. Another one. See that they had a chain reaction at and number four was stopped, right? But this is about uh, the fuel pool. It's gone. It's long gone. Like David Suzuki said, if number four goes, it's bye bye Japan and evacuate North America. Well, he knew it was gone, see? But that was the great lie they pulled on everybody's eyes. All of the stricken reactors in Spain fuel pool contain plutonium. All of them. You heard Lake Barrett earlier saying, oh, it's just salacious, that's all. But you've seen the studies from Dr. Ray McGill, maybe. Uh, the beagle dogs and beagle puppies, how he killed them for 35 years of loveless respiratory research with plutonium and americium and curium, which is the biggest production, not cesium, not iodine. And curium acts like plutonium and americium and neptunium. Iodine 131 and number four pool suggest the spent fuel pool started its own chain reaction. April 15, 2011. Number four spent fuel pool at 22,000 times above normal iodine 131. See, these people are maniacs every time they say that word. But there you go, at least it, you can extrapolate once you see something anyway, see? You can't have one without the other. You can't have the iodine without the breach. TEPCO sent an emergency mail of every reactor. Four water levels decreased at five times normal rate in tank near spent fuel pool. Linked to New Year's quake. So they, this is another event. This was probably something else going on, but they, they blamed it on number four. But it was probably five or six reactor that was having a problem, see? Aerosol plutonium from Fukushima detected in Europe. Lake Bird said, don't worry about it. Shut up. Keep your fucking mouth shut. Disgusting. Tefco sends emergency. We just covered that one. Number four, water levels dropped to one-third capacity. <laughs> I bet they did. It was all gone, see? This was just they kept the headlines going to manipulate everybody. Mystery explosion in reactor four caused by radiation dissolving water and boiling spent fuel pool. Contradicts. TEPCO's assumption. Each, or spent fuel pool number four was likely dry enough to lead to a catastrophic, but like I showed you earlier, they had chain reactions. Explosion! It, it blew up, detonated, caught fire, blew up, detonated, caught fire. Spent fuel pool number four boiled, it's empty. And it was, that means it's gone. See? May, May the 16th, they alluded to it. Temperature and spent fuel pool number four much higher than normal levels. April the 13th, maybe boiling. There was nothing there. It was long gone. That was the game. They kept it alive right up until the day. See, they're still running around with number four. That's what number four looks like. But here's Tefco a month ago. And, uh... Maniac. Uh, the manipulate uh, the machine. Showing you that. Saying that that fucking thing there is inside of that. And like the, the experts I showed you earlier. And here, you know, Miles Brunt done the same thing. And, and Seth Dorn, both of them went down there and allegedly said they were inside of that and showed pictures like that, when in reality we know the difference, see? It, it, sorry, it, it's like that, and he tore it all fucking apart. Smoking and swearing, that's my motto today, apparently. Now, we'll come over and call it a day. And so, is there any spent fuel pool at the top of that reactor? Is there a top of the reactor? 
see, and nobody, 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 everybody come here and told you that. You got to get the fuel rods out of the fuel pool that was on the roof. That's not there. Ernie Gunnarsson, you had Helen Kellicott, and David Suzuki. You had all the experts, every one of them come here and asserted that the law for TEPCO. That's all they were doing. They knew better. They knew it wasn't there. And now they expect us to forgive them for that. Forgive them for their sins and take them back on their wing and trust something else they're going to tell us. They, they told us it was like that. In reality, it was all gone. Because it was at the roof. See? That is the problem. That is why... Because they're the leading experts. All the leading experts come out and told us the fable too, along with TEPCO. And then the people that put these people up on their web pages and propagate those people out there uh, are doing us a great harm. They're doing everybody a great disservice. Are harming the operation and the movement by doing that. And they, most of them can't accept that or understand it. Or, or if they do, they think that the greater good can prevail and they're wrong. We can't get rid of the law until we get rid of the lawyers first. We can't get rid of the law until we call it every one of the lawyers. We can't hold preferential treatment. Oh, he's actually pretty good or she's a pretty good person, so I'm not going to call her out on her lawyers. It doesn't work for me. And if you don't like that, you can go somewhere else. Because I'm not here to tell the lawyers. I'm here to tell the truth. And I'm here to call out the lawyers. And I can't be restricted. I can't be, I hold my back because you happen to like the lawyers. And if you're going to like the lawyers, then we don't want you in the operation and the movement at all. If you're going to put the lawyers up in your pages and propagate that out there, understanding what you know today, right now, here at this very moment, that if you're not willing to call out the people for their lawyers, how can we trust you to also is the question I have to ask myself all the time. And so it's a, it's a, hard, it's a long struggle. I understand people uh, don't understand the law. See? But if you watch my stuff, you understand that law. There's no reason to keep doing it. And if you do do it, you have to apologize for doing it or something to the people that are watching it to make them understand that you don't trust this person, but it does have some documentation there that is true. But you got to literally, the minute you feed them a lie, to try to feed them good information also, it's, it's just, you, you're not understanding what you're doing to everybody. You're not able to appreciate it and you shouldn't be fucking at it. You're doing us more harm than you can ever do them good by putting the lawyers, giving them a pedestal after they already lied and got away with it. And I showed you a bunch of the lawyers today and talked about the other ones. That's the heartbreak of this. I don't want to do what I'm doing, but I, I got to do what I'm doing because I can't find anybody honest. Once they burnt the bridge with the lawyers, there's nothing I can do about it. Right? I got to jump on them. I got to try to wreck them. I'm not here for you or anybody else. I'm here for this entire planet. I'm not even here for me. I'm here for this entire planet. Because I got it. I get it. I know it. I've been vilified and demonized and attacked. And where there's been faked debts, as far as we can tell, in order to come out and demonize me, where I've been arrested and vilified in the media of something I didn't even say or do. And the videos used to get me arrested weren't even taken down with a court order. They were taken down with spam accounts when I was in jail. But after I come out of jail, I had a court order to take down 300 other videos. You tell me there's not a concerted effort trying to defund me and destroy me. And that has successfully literally done that in every context of that word. Only problem is I don't understand that or I don't accept it and I won't give up. Or that I understand the merit of the things that I do. Hugs for everybody. Every day is a long day and every night is longer. Until we find people telling the truth. Until that day, um, I will have to do what I do. I will have to continue to, to battle the demons that are battling me and the people that are battling everybody else by providing them with poor information and with known lawyers and fabricators, even though they're experts. I showed you a whole bunch of experts today. Why don't you put them up on your site also? You know what I'm saying? You can't selectively say, okay, well, they lied to us and told us number four uh, was like a crushed cigarette pack or they're going to move their family out of Boston to Australia or that if, like, 
you know, number four tipped over, bye bye Japan and North America, they knew the difference. They weren't, they're not gullible and they're not stupid. And you shouldn't be either. And I'm not the bad person. If you don't want to, if you want to shoot out there, you put me out there. If you want the law out there, you're putting all the other ones out there. And please support me. Please fucking fund me. If people were donating $5 a week or a dollar a week each, I'd be pounding the guts out of these people boy now. Uh, but I have to beg to get whatever I get. And then that's only good. You got to gather up to go do something. It's never enough to do, do the things that need to be done. And no organization will back me because I told the truth and showed the truth. And I strive and work so hard to provide. I work all night, all day, so I can do this one hour each day. Google got me censored right off the planet. The RCM or the Sandage Police Department in Vancouver, uh, Victoria, British Columbia, Canada, working with uh, University of Victoria in British Columbia, Canada, working with Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution with the FBI, in the documents, in my court documents have used Google to censor me. Yet I'm back on Google. <clears throat> I'm just saying the people that are doing it is the proof that there's evil people on the planet. The prosecutor and the judge and the people at these institutions and police stations and Woods Hole and the University of Victoria that have strived to trick you and fool you and demonize me and vilify me, these are not like me or you. These are soulless monsters in our midst and they will devour us if we don't stand our ground. These are cowards. These are the worst types too. These are utterly cowards who got, like that judge who was just recently stepped down, not arrested, stepped down for having over 4,000 prisoners perform sex acts on him at his home for reduced sentences for 30 years. A sitting judge. These monsters gravitate to our positions of power and that's why our universities and institutions, every fucking one of them, every one of these professors were handpicked because they're like that judge. Where they're incapable of understanding, but but capable, or I'm sorry, they're capable of understanding, but still doing it and getting away with it. Incapable of covering it up. Incapable of unimaginable evils. That is the the epitome, the epitome of the human experience, that we have been destroyed from the inside by 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 academics by the people we're supposed to trust, by our media, the very people we're supposed to trust, have betrayed us re relentlessly at every step of this uh, event and everything else. It's shocking. It's heartbreaking. It's demoralizing. Well, I'll be back tomorrow, 10.30 a.m. Hugs for everybody. Shawnee again. Pina. Shawnee, I'm thirst. Just cruising. We don't care what Dot says. I got 2,000 pictures all over the coastline each time with the GPS, the documentation. So anybody can come by and say something. The documentation is at the nuclear proctologist. Is what I'm saying. But the media and institutions, Oregon, Dusty. I mean, people will tell you it's just cesium or, or, or strontium or iodine coming out of the reactor. Or they're literally the stupidest people on the planet. These are the tracers telling you about the 12,000 other isotopes. If you don't understand that, let me give you one more minute of a broadcast. One more minute. I'll bring up that for one second. These are studies pre-Fukushima. And these are studies about tritium, basically, which is one of the apparently least harmful ones. And look how harmful it actually really is, see? Uh, and so tritium studies, and we've got thousands on tritium, over a thousand, just one folder. But pre-Fukushima studies, pre-nuclear studies, and worldwide studies, was uh, tritium was three to seven becquerels per cubic meter, right? You know, all these different studies worldwide showing one becquerel a meter, a cubic meter, 100 liters, 1,000 liters, which is a cubic meter. You know, look what they've done in Chernobyl, with one third of size, 30 percent meltdown stopped after 10 days. They've done all that because it was harmless? No, they've done that because it was fucking deadly.
It was deadly. We know that. Seventy-two thousand. If, if it was only seventy-two thousand times worse, I wouldn't mind. There's no reactor at the top of that fuel pool. Hugs for everybody. We'll see everybody tomorrow at 10.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, British Columbia Time, and live streaming on Beautiful Girl Boy Dana on YouTube. We'll be waiting for the call from the Alberta Funeral Home about Jeff Palco's plot, and I might be sitting all afternoon at a RCMP station giving them documentation to go pick up a bunch of people. That would probably be the only good thing that came out of all of this, but it would still be very sad. Hugs for everybody. We'll see everybody um, tomorrow morning when we get an opportunity. Uh, we might put out little videos tonight. Take care, folks.